call the North Smithfield School Committee meeting of Tuesday, November 15, 2022 to order. Clerk, please call the roll. Chair Lombardi. Present. Mrs. Mayo. Here. Mrs. Vada. Here. Mr. Connell. Here. Mr. Jones. Here. We have five present. We have a quorum. Moving on to the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, I don't know if anybody signed up for uh, public or community comment, but I know Councilman Badney wants to speak to us. So. Thank you. Good evening, Chairman, members of the Council. I'm just here to give you my thanks for the last four years, level of cooperation between Council and the School Committee that we've had. It's not always that way. And some of you know, and I've been around for a while. Um, it, it was nice that we could work together. I think we got a lot of things done, a lot of production, productive things were done, building wise. Um, the building's in great shape. Um, Budget-wise, you know, we had the issue with COVID. We didn't know where the budget was going to go. You guys understood that. We took action, and eventually, we got it was all resolved, and, and no, no harm, no foul. So it all worked out. But by working together, you know, we got we got all those things done. So I just wanted to come here and say I appreciate you know the cooperation, and, and I was pleased that we could work together like that. Um, it was a pleasure working with the superintendent, another different superintendent. Um, Alan is, 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 a, is, a, is a great asset to you guys. Um, so I think that everything's going good. The other thing that I wanted to talk about was the field, the, the field, and actually parking at the field. It's, it's an issue. Um, and I know that it's out there. Oh, we, we don't have enough parking. We don't have enough parking. Well, we do have enough parking. They need to put a phrase in front of that term. They don't have enough convenient parking because I go by there on a Friday night and they're on the street and I come by here on a Sunday morning and they're on the street and people don't realize when they park in the street you can't see if you're leaving the facility you cannot see I don't know what the 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 easy simple solution is I don't know why we're not enforcing it and I'm not saying that's your job to enforce it I'm not saying that at all I know it's the police department that should be enforcing it I brought it up as a council person that have to have them look at it. It really, it, it kind of fell fell into the administration. It really, didn't really go anywhere. But some of the potential solutions might be that as you develop policy on using that field and whatnot, when outside groups come in, that part of that thing is they're responsible for police detail. Or if, if it's an interscholastic new game or whatever, that maybe whoever is the site manager for the school department is responsible and say, if they see people out there, then they go to call and have a patrolman come up and say, hey, it won't take long. If you start tagging them, they'll stop. But I came by one Sunday and I was like, you gotta be kidding me. This lady was, was literally popped. Here's the sign, she was popped right here. <laughs> it's like, they can't read. <laughs> um, maybe they're not North Smithfield graduates, who knows? <laughs> um, but it, it, it's, I think it's an issue that that we that needs to get addressed somehow and we have plenty of parking and, and the issue with the path maybe maybe we need to do some landscaping and, and, and do some lighting far cheaper than 100,000 or 120 to, to put a parking lot in and all the other things that go with it um, it look it looks good when people come in with the idea is that oh well we can get a parking lot for nothing if we let someone else do something and, and sometimes those partnerships are good I didn't think this one was personally. If you notice that, I didn't say a whole lot of that meaning because I, I didn't. I didn't see it as being beneficial to, to anybody other than the developer. In this case, I think you guys researched it and kind of came to the same conclusion. They would have put that canopy up. How do you plow the parking lot now? Now you got poles all over the place and all those other issues. But it seemed it was good to him, and he would have paid for it. And some people look at it and say that's a good thing, but I really didn't. I really didn't see it. I think you got plenty of parking. Maybe adding more handicapped spots in that parking lot to address the, the concerns of some of those folks. It just, I think that you got plenty of parking. It just looking at it and trying to figure out a solution to get them off the street. 
when you look at it, it's an athletic event and people don't want to walk <laughs> and, and go to other places. I mean, it, some of you are going to other, other schools and whatnot, and they don't have parking right there at the field. You park in the school parking lot and you walk to their fields on a, on a path, that lighted path or whatever. So just my, just my two cents kind of, you know, it's, I know it's, it's, it's your, um, it's your bailiwick that's, you know, My focus from the long for a long time. Well, I've had two focuses from this point out on the street. Second biggest asset we have is your buildings and grounds. And we've done a lot of good things that are in really good shape. And you guys with Alan and, and, and us making sure we fund it, we're in really good shape. And, and obviously the biggest asset is our students. And and I think we're doing wonderful things with that. We're, we're right where we should be, I think, and we're doing great things. So I commend you guys for that. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. And uh, I'd also like to echo what you said. And thank you for all, all your support. Anytime we had any issues, you were open to hear us and you were very supportive. So thank you very much. I appreciate that. I think we all do. And I, I'd like to also add, um, even though you've left the town council, <laughs> I hope you stick around and, and help us think through the difficult things and, and come be a thought partner for us and don't I know you won't forget about North Smithfield. You never have, so. I'm not leaving the town. Thank you for always being the advocate. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Paul. We'll see you around. <laughs> uh, does anyone else uh, want to comment? Superintendent? There's nobody online. Okay. With their hands raised. And there's no one here? Okay. Uh, I'll move on to the consent agenda. Um, does anybody have any questions or concerns about the consent agenda? I do want to make just a couple of comments um, in regards to um, item number uh, seven or, or in the in even six. Um, I just want to make sure that we're we're providing equal uh, access to all sports or equal uniform or equal spending. Um, that's something that I, I just want to say for the record. Um, the other thing is, you know, I just wanted to recognize the donations that were given to us by uh, Bryant University, Fidelity, and the Boroughville Lions Club. Uh, and one more thing is I wanted to congratulate uh, Matthew Legassi uh, for his uh, Eagle Scout. Um, very prestigious, um, and I wish him well. Uh, we do have a, a letter that we'll, mm -hmm. we will be sending him. Um, that's all I need to say. Anything else? Right. Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. So moved. Motion to be made. Is there a second? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? The ayes have it. Moving on to reports, Superintendent. Just going to take a moment, share the screen. Sure. Another moment to get rid of all the Zoom bars out of my screen so I can see my screen. All right, so I typically do this every November after we had our October enrollment reports. And I just want to share uh, the enrollments uh, and the trends that we're currently seeing right now. One of the things that uh, you see up here for October 1st of 2022, we had 1,619 students, which is an increase from last year. Uh, you know, we, we, we've seen some reports that basically uh, uh, the ask reports that say that um, our, our student uh, population is shrinking. Uh, they look at live birth, they look at families that move in, a uh, number of factors. We do have a lot of housing development, but we do have new properties for people to move into. Um, and that's beginning to show in our enrollment data that our population is not only stabilizing, but actually slightly increasing in a few areas. Now, that was 
1,619 as of uh, October 1st. As of yesterday, we have 1,625. So we do anticipate that as the year continues on, we will continue to increase our enrollments. Now, this one here, out of district um, high cost special ed, these are students that uh, have such needs that we can't really provide all the programming for them. They, they need clinical uh, care, they need residential placements. We've been working very hard to keep our students in district, uh, not only because we can do it uh, much more affordably, but it also prevents our North Smithfield students from having to take the buses and go to Providence, North Providence, and, and where, where the other facilities are located. So as you can see, we've been hovering the past few years around 18, 17, 16 students that we pay tuitions for their outplacements. And those tuitions can run between 70 and $100,000 and then you, if you add the transportation, we had the, uh, our, our group of media students uh, would actually be about $800,000 out of the budget to a million. Uh, and again, we're working very hard to keep the kids in school with us in their home school, home district. And I want you to just take a look at that drop from 16 to nine uh, that we we're, we're doing a good job with this and we, we're, we're continuing to push that. Our CTE programs, now we only have three CTEs at the high school. We have a small high school. You know, there's only so many things that we can field uh, for career and technical programs. And you take a look at over the past couple of years, in 1920, when we began the CTEs, we had four students coming in from out of district and you know their home districts would be paying us tuition. 2021, five students. 21-22, um, last year we had 11 students. And this year we had 14 students enrolled in our CTE programs, all from di districts paying North Smithfield tuition, as opposed to us paying them tuition. Uh, right now, we have 23 students from our surrounding uh, communities coming to the CTE programs in North Smithfield. I don't know the number offhand how many kids we have. I'm going to show you actually in a second going out. So, anyway, this is a good trend. We're seeing more students take advantage of the CTE programs and the uh, excellent facilities and education at North Smithfield High School. For our homeschooling numbers, you know, these are students who uh, families who decide, okay, you know, I don't wanna do public school. I don't wanna do private parochial. I want to uh, um, educate my students at home. Pre-pandemic, we had 29. And we were pretty much in that 24 to 29 student range. COVID hit and homeschooling numbers went up to 51, which is understandable. Last year, uh, you know, COVID still present and uh, 41 students were on homeschooling. This year, we're, we're back to our pre-pandemic levels, you know, 29 students. Now, of those 29 <laughs> students, they're from families with multiple kids. So, you know, it's, it's really about uh, maybe 15 or 16 families, uh, many with two or three kids. For the, our charter and vocationals, all right? So we, we, we have a, a breakdown of how many students are going to each of the charter schools in our region. And looking at the trend, you know, I, I set it up from FY16 all the way to this year, FY23. So we have the breakdown of how many North Smithfield students are going to out of district placements, uh, charter or vocational CTE programs. Last year, we had 80 students that we were paying tuition to go to the, uh, uh, especially, the char especially the CTE programs, Ponagansett, uh, Lincoln, not this year, uh, Jackie Walsh, Smithfield, Situate. This year we have 66 students 
who are going to schools other than North Smithfield schools. And again, parents have that right, they have the choice. But our challenge is to keep as many students here in North Smithfield, offer the programs and offer, uh, um, offer the education and the environment that the kids want to stay. Now, do students choose to go to other schools that have programs that we don't have? Yes. And that's what this is designed to do. Um, do we have students going for social reasons? Yes, not academic. Do we have students who go to some of the uh, other CTE programs because they have friends or a boyfriend or girlfriend or a cousin going to those schools? Yes, they do. And there's really no recourse to say no, but the thing is, is that what we can do is just continue to improve so that the students don't want to go to another school, you know, or also take a look at um, strategically, what CTE would we have to offer in addition to the three we already have at the high school? Right? So it's about being competitive and attracting and retaining the students. So this year of the 66 students who are in the charters and the CTEs, uh, 18 are new students. Last year, it was 27 new students that have chosen to come. This year, it's only 18. So again, we're working to retain the students. So I'll just point out uh, a, a couple of uh, uh, trends here, which I thought was interesting. Um, so for 22, 23, and we have, you know, the students who have come to us, how did they come to us? Uh, they transferred in from a, a district outside Rhode Island, 36 students. They transferred from a district within Rhode Island, 46 students. They transferred from a private uh, non-religious school in Rhode Island. Last year, we had two students come back from a private non-religious school. This year, seven students came back. You know, parents maybe took a look at what they were paying for tuition to go to uh, a private school and they were looking at what we're doing here in our schools and they're thinking, you know what, maybe it doesn't make sense to pay all that tuition when our students are very strong. Going down here, transfer from charter. So this year, um, over the summer, we had 18 students who were in charter schools decide to come back to North Smithfield. All right, so again, uh, a lot of the transfers from the charters are uh, from the, uh, at the elementary level from the mayoral academy. The mayoral academy keeps adding new grade levels every year, um, but even with the adding of the new grade levels, we're getting more students coming back every year. So, and, you know, and again, I'm, I'm, I put this in the packet, it's in the public packet, I'll put it up on the website and you know, more of this will be in the budget executive summary uh, for you to review. But basically it comes down to, um, we're retaining more students, whether it's charter CTE, whether it's out of, out of district special ed, and we're providing the incentives for students to come in. So, and, and that actually leads over to Claire Arnold, who is going to uh, review our state assessment scores and how are our students doing who are here. So I'm going to just switch over. And Claire, you can tell me when to move a slide. So we recently received our state assessment results. Those are um, the RICAS grades three through eight and the SAT up at the, the high school. Um, and we were very eager to see these results because of COVID and knowing the impact it had on student achievement. And we knew full well while it was happening that it had a significant impact and we saw um, a, definitely a significant drop in scores last year. The interesting thing about last year is that we went and came into the year really hoping it was going to be a year that we can make up all the gaps from the previous years. But we also started last year and we were wearing masks, 
we were socially distancing, we weren't having small groups of students working together or doing even science projects together because of the some of the rules that we had to follow. And then we also had pretty strict quarantine rules last year. It, even if you weren't sick, but a family member was sick, you had to stay home. And we had to enforce those rules and we had high absenteeism. And so we we really hoped last year was going to be the year to make up the gaps, but in, in you know some areas that we uh, we just weren't as the students weren't always present in, in class. Um, but with that said, we did have some um, good good success. And I actually just some picture in because uh, someone had said to me recently about how students regressed during COVID. And I just felt like that's uh, that's not how I think of it, that students didn't necessarily regress. And it really reminded me, and that's why I have the image of the, the traffic, and I had hit traffic on the land here, I was actually thinking of this image. But the way I think of it is that it's as if I'm driving to the beach, I'm going to Narragansett Beach and I'm, I'm cruising on 95 and I'm doing really well. And then I hit Providence and now it's like bumper to bumper and slow. And when we hit COVID hit, that's what happened, that we were still moving forward and students were learning, but they were not learning at the pace, at the rate that they typically <clears throat> learned. So we were learning, we were moving forward, but much slower. So as soon as you know traffic lets up in Providence, you try to accelerate, you put your foot on the gas and you're like, I wanna make up some time here. And that's what last year was about. However, last year is like getting to route four and you've hit the lights. So you're kind of cruising, but then you need to stop and then you keep going and then you need to stop. And so, so um, we didn't regress, but we just didn't make the progress we wanted to during the COVID years. However, we are accelerating learning and we're doing many initiatives to accelerate that learning, but we still are, you know, working towards that. And so, so just a really, oh, no, one back. <laughs> Thank you. And so I think it, I'd start with like the big picture and this is our district summary, how we did. And so in um, English language arts, we went down 2.8%. This actually was a trend in the state um, to go down. It also was in Massachusetts. RICAS and MCAS have the same assessment. They teach the same standards and have the same assessment. Um, and and every everyone went down, and we kept, we kept that trend. We went down a little less than other districts, but it's definitely a, a concern and something that we saw and we're we're digging into. We did go up in math, and if you remember all of the different presentations we've had at school committee, that we had a major focus in math, knowing that um, mathematics in particular losing a year of of. Um, or not a full year, but losing some of that instruction in math really has an impact on future years. And so many of our initiatives were in math and we went up 14.6% and that was significantly higher than the state. The state went up about uh, six or 7%, I think it is. And we went up 14. So we were we were thrilled with that and told us we're, we're on the right path and we still wanna keep moving forward. Our SAT data, we actually went up almost 5% in English language arts, which was wonderful. Um, however, in SAT math, we stayed the same. And so we're looking into that and we're, we're diving into that data. And we also um, pretty much stayed the same, but went up 2.9% in, in our science. And so the overall picture of how we're doing and, and is, I think we're, certainly on the right path, but we also certainly have work to do. Um, one thing in particular um, to notice, um, especially in our um, math, is that we have um, in RICAS 2022, we are at pre-pandemic levels. Pre-pandemic levels is not where we want to stay. When we were at pre-pandemic levels in 2019, we really wanted to improve math instruction. So we're going to keep our, you know, pedal to the metal on that one, but, um, but we're going in the right direction. So here's we, where we are by school. And this is um, the year to year comparison in English language arts. Um, and then I have, you know, where we were in 2019, where we were in 2021 and where we are now. And so NSCS went down 0.7%. 
and SMS went down 4% and the high school SAT was up 5%. This slide is much better looking to me. Um, the, this is our year to year comparison in mathematics and um, in 2022 and at NSES we went up 14.4% and the middle school we went up 15% and the high school we pretty much stayed the same and went up 0.3%. Um, this, I think it's really important to see where we are in comparison to the state. And I also wanted to include um, the state, our state, Rhode Island, but also Massachusetts, knowing that it's the same assessment. And so um, when you look at uh, the RICAS ELA as a district, Rhode, uh, North Smithfield is 20% above Rhode Island and we're 10% above Massachusetts average. For math, we're 24% above the Rhode Island average and 11% above math, math, uh, Massachusetts. In SAT, we are 21% above the Rhode Island average and 13% above the Connecticut average. We use Connecticut because um, Massachusetts uses MCAS for their high school students. And for the SAT math, we are 12% above the Rhode Island average and 2.5% above the Connecticut average. Can I interrupt you for a Please. second? So every time, you know, there's, there's issues, I'm going to say uh, on Facebook, unfortunately, they always say, when you get up to the Massachusetts standards, you know, you're, you're, you're horrible compared to Massachusetts. Why don't you get up to the Massachusetts standards? Are we in front of Massachusetts? So we, we North Smithfield are, and I, a lot of the, the comments on Facebook are probably um, talking about Rhode Island as a state. And so Rhode Island is, is below, significantly below Massachusetts. So, okay. but North Smithfield is not. It's very helpful. We're Thank above you. Yeah, yes, uh, Ms. Arnold, I just had one question. Why on, why do you think, or why do they, what might be the reasons why on the uh, English, we went a couple of points, the schools went down a little bit on the, um, the ride cast, but went up on the SAT. That seems a little, you know, I think you said it was a four or six point jump on the SAT, but a 2.5% or so drop on the ride cast. Any, um, so I'm not entirely sure. We just got the results, so we are digging into them. I guess I would theorize that um, they are different tests, so you can't completely compare them. But uh, our younger ones in the reading, when we drilled down and looked at the subcategories, and that's what one of the most important things when we get our RICAS data is for us, for curriculum and instruction, is how are we doing in the subcategories. So for um, the English language arts, we see how our students are doing in reading, how they're doing in writing, and how they're doing in language skills. And the languages could be conventions for writing, or it could be vocabulary or grammar. And so um, when you look at our subcategories, our students are actually doing really well in reading, and they're or, or holding their own in reading, and they're holding their own in um, language. It's the writing that um, seem to have dropped and that's or that's where our, our biggest weakness is and when you think about the little ones when they weren't in school or, um, consistently they're physically not writing typing on the computer is not the same I think the instruction for writing that we've done and writing actually I was thrilled to see that writing is our weakness because in the past we've always been great writers so I know that we can get back there um, but our writing instruction is um, really using best practices. We model great writing, then the students write themselves, and then we conference with students, we sit next to them. Well, for quite a while, we couldn't just sit next to a child and just like uh, have those more um, close conversations about a student writing. It seemed like everybody was had to be six feet apart. And so those things add up, and so that could be part of it. We also lost the stamina for writing that um, we found and in our youngest ones who weren't in school consistently. When you think of um, building, need, students need gross motor skills before they can build fine motor skills. And this is for our littlest students. And so they're not out, like outside playing and they're not in their sports and not building the gross motor and then they're not building the fine motor. 
well, if they don't have the fine motor, they don't have the physical stamina to just write the long essay, it's exhausting to them. So we're building like one of our initiatives is to like literally build up the stamina for writing um, in addition to idea development and, and things, you know, all the great writing that we do. But um, so I guess that's where I would, I would say that our, it's our youngest students with their stamina for writing and that the amount of practice that they didn't, the consistent practice that they didn't have over the years. Mr. Chair, one, one quick thing. Sure. Clear. Ms. Arnold, just one other thing too. And I, I don't want to speculate because you haven't dug into that yet, but can the student take the SAT a couple of times they during can. the year, whereas the RICAS is just a one-shot deal? Yes, and this is only from that one administration. We did have students sometimes take it like, you know, a month after or six weeks after. Um, so, yes. So students definitely improved the second time that they took it. We just don't have that as state assessment. I'm just wondering if the multiple test taking helps. That's all that I can. Right, right. So, so then what do we do with this going forward? And so it's really the first thing for us in when we think of all the initiatives that we've done in the last year is disentangle which initiative uh, produce the most value, which almost sounds like it would be easy, but sometimes it's not because we do them all these initiatives simultaneously. Um, but are the are there specific initiatives maybe that we did at one grade level that seem to really give us a, a boost with conceptual understanding and mathematics? Well, then we want to do that in other grade levels. And so we're digging into the data and we're also kind of con then comparing it with our initiatives. Um, and we're going to build up our initiatives to be really strategic and, and to target the students' needs. Um, we also want to pinpoint specific gaps in learning. And that's where I talked about the subcategories like the writing versus reading. It, and I'm thrilled that it's writing and not reading because if, if students really struggled in reading, they're also going to struggle in writing because the students write about what they read. It's a, usually an essay based on something that they read. And so um, knowing that our students are, are reading or have solid skills, we always want to improve, but they have solid skills in reading according to the subcategories, um, that, that's, a, that's a nice place to start. And so, um, and then we're looking at, you know, within math, is it fractions or it's, is it geometry? Is there a unit of study that we really need to beef up? Um, and so we're digging into that and then we'll bring it to professional development. And first and foremost, it's always working with teachers on what we call tier one instruction. Tier one is what we do with all students every day. That's like just your typical teacher in the classroom instruction. And I, I actually said it today, but I've said it many times, like you can't intervene your your way out of a tier one problem. First and foremost, we have to teach well the first time. And then we can intervene for students that need extra help after that, but we have to make sure our, our core instruction is on target. And so um, we continue uh, professional development with that. I did want to add a couple slides just talking about ESSER because it's all intertwined because so many of the initiatives and the interventions that we're able to run is because of ESSER funding. And so just a friendly reminder of what we um, did when we developed our ESSER application. We started out with some surveys and that went to all families and it went to all of our educators and we um, chose priorities and we brought it to the school improvement teams. Um, we brought it to the administrative team. Uh, we analyzed data. And, and our four priorities um, were really unanimous, actually. Everybody was on the same page. And number one was first and foremost, implementation of additional intervention opportunities throughout the district that take place during the school day. So, so that was um, our number one priority, and that's where a lot of our funding is going. Um, next was implementation of after school programs or academic interventions after school hours, and that's before school, after school, or in the summer. And provide, also provide mental health services um, and supports and also to um, engage our students back into to, uh, learning. And uh, last priority was to continue to repair and improve school facilities to reduce risk of virus transmission. And so a couple of the interventions or, or the things that we were able to do with the ESSER funds is this year we did hire two um, engagement coordinators, one at the middle school and one at the high school and their full-time position is to work with our students. And it's really to um, 
just engage our students back in school. I think I mentioned to you at one point that they have different hours than a typical teacher. They come in later and they stay later so they can run um, after school activities and, and programs. Um, expanding our math intervention programs, which we did, and we're seeing the results of that. And so in uh, this school committee, especially has always supported math intervention and it really it matters and it works and I, I appreciate that. Um, implementing uh, academic um, enrichment summer programs, which we, we've done the last few years. Uh, we have part-time teacher assistants at the lower elementary level, and I think I've mentioned this before, but um, in kindergarten and first grade, we a lot of people think like, oh no, our gaps are only at the upper grades. But, you know, we call them, I was actually in preschool today, and one of the teachers said, oh, these are our COVID babies. They were dur born during COVID. And their, their lives, their, their little lives, you know, three, four, and five-year-olds, so much of that was during COVID, and they didn't have the experiences that typical little ones would have. And, and it does make it have an impact. And so having an extra um, part-time uh, teacher assistant in the room to pull small groups to students aside to do extra reading um, with them has made um, a big difference. And uh, we've had a lot of good feedback from, from that initiative. Providing high dosage tutoring um, after school hours, funding long and short term substitute teachers to support sustained and consistent instruction. We still have people that are out with COVID. I mean, it's not totally gone. Um, and because we've been able to have long uh, building based subs, that's really helped with some of it. Um, we also use our substitutes for um, for using funding to implement the right to read professional development. That's really totally separate from COVID, but it's actually going to help us in the long run as far as teaching and learning and reading. And so it's actually a tricky time to do um, such a major lift of a PD, but it's actually the right time to do it. And so we're moving forward on that. It's, it's pretty intensive and we're, um, and we're definitely getting there. Um, but we use our building-based subs to help with that when teachers are out during professional development. And we're also the facilities piece of the ESSER funding was to continue with the window uh, pre replacement project, starting with the cafeteria. And the cafeteria windows are almost finished. I don't know if you've driven by, but it looks great. And um, the other is the signage and where um, it was on back order, but it, it will be coming um, before the, definitely before the first of the year. And that's the electronic sign. And it really is for community communication. We have so much going on in our schools all the time. It could be for safety reasons if there's ever an emergency, but it's also just for community communication. You know, we have a concert coming up or, or whatever. It is. So it's something going on at the high school almost every night. The lights are always on over there. Um, and so that's some of the initiatives that SR has um, has supported. And and the last thing I wanted to say be, before I ended is that, so I can look into the data and a lot of times I drill down and I just um, enjoy analyzing data. And so I'll drill down and look into students and I was looking into um, our, our students that were just proficient right? They just made proficiency. They weren't proficient the year before in math. And I, I wanted to see, like, well, what was their history like? And what I found was, I'll say, a student in eighth grade who met the standards in math this year. Uh, you could see that they met the standards in fourth grade. They met the standards in fifth grade. They didn't take RICAS in sixth grade because of, you know, because of COVID. And then they were partially proficient in seventh grade and then proficient in eighth grade. And that, like, excellent, right? We had students that was proficient for many years. COVID came, they're not proficient, and now they are. But then as I kept digging in, I saw students that, you know, they were on the cusp. Maybe fourth grade they were, met the standards. In fifth grade they didn't. In sixth grade they didn't take it. In seventh grade they didn't. In eighth grade they did. But one of my favorite ones that I dug into and I definitely saw this a few times where students that in you know third grade they did not meet the standards in fourth grade they did not meet the standards in fifth grade they didn't take COVID in sixth grade they did not meet the standards in seventh grade they met the standards and so you know that was just like looking at that it's 
you know, it's only one test and I, and I know that we, we use a variety of types of assessments, but to me, that is just wonderful to know that with these interventions that we're putting in place using these SR phones are definitely working. And I just want to share that with you because I thought it was just exciting that to a student who has not been meeting the standards over the years really has um, taken to the intervention supports. So thank you very much, but I'd, ha I'd be happy to um, talk all night. So ask me any questions. <laughs> I don't want to know. Just one question. Uh, on the Right to Read Act, our cohort that we had last year, just an update. Is it the same cohort still? So, so we actually pivoted. Um, we had a cohort that went through, it's called Letters Training, and I know many districts do it, and um, it's, I'm sure it's wonderful. It didn't really work for us. Um, it was a lot of time after school hours. Um, it was a lot of time out of the classroom. Our teachers didn't necessarily feel um, engaged and motivated from it. Um, and so we, and if you remember, and I know you have a background um, teaching, um, we also had a cohort that was doing Orton-Gillingham. Now right. Orton-Gillingham is like the gold standard of teaching a dyslexic child to, to read, but the gold standard of, of uh, the science of reading. And we had our special ed teachers going to that and they came back from this training just so incredibly excited and enthused and they would meet after school hours and they plan lessons and it was um it was wonderful and after conversations with mr st jean and, and many others the the one um, the first program we tried that wasn't working for us schedule wise because there wasn't like consistent days that they were out it was really hard with subs um, as well as some of the the amount of hours after after school hours that teachers had to do, we decided to go forward knowing that we have the SR funds with what we know is the gold standard of teaching students to to read and so um, the science of reading and so we're going for um, all special ed teachers in the district will be Orton Gillingham trained as well as all elementary teachers will be Orton Gillingham trained every every elementary teacher. And so we had, oh, I wish I had my numbers in front of me. No, that's okay. Had, I didn't expect you to have, I was actually mostly, I should have clarified the one Gillingham cohort was what I was, most, okay. was really asking about. So yeah. thank you. Yeah. So, um, and teachers, every cohort that goes out and does this training, it's intense, it is rigorous, but they come back and they're excited and they share it with their, their coworkers. And um, I'm thrilled about that. So we're moving forward. It's still, we still have a lot ahead of us, but in um, just a few months this year, we've definitely made a lot of progress. Thank you. Uh, so just briefly to summarize everything that you just said, um, it seems as if we're doing better than the Rhode Island average, better than the surrounding state averages, certainly better than the national average, but not as well as we'd like to do. So we're working towards that. So that would probably be something that parents can understand, right? Yes, <laughs> so, yes. Thank you. That's yeah. perfect. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. <clears throat> Anyone else? Claire, thank you uh, for all you do. We appreciate it. Uh, hearing uh, no other questions, I'll move on to uh, item number four, informational. Does anybody have any questions for the superintendent in regards to this matter? I would like to just call out, make note, Pam Othier. Yes. Her retirement, mm -hmm. uh, she submitted a retirement uh, letter. So at the end of the year, Pam is going to move on to a different type of life, uh, which I know will be difficult for her mm -hmm. because she has been <laughs> so embedded in the community and the schools and the kids and PE and health teacher. She's invested her time in playground equipment and she does jump rope for a heart. In fact, uh, every year she, she runs that, uh, we get about, she, she's able to raise about $15,000. Um, in the last year, it was uh, $41,000. So she knows every kid by name and she tells them stories and she makes them laugh and she keeps them moving and exercising and um, she will be very much missed. 
but we absolutely are, are, are pleased that she's able to retire and do other things. So, great, thank you. Moving on to item number five, old business, uh, the fiscal year 23 operating capital budget. Lisa, anything? So in 2023, we are uh, pretty much wrapping up the uh, first part of the audit. Everything's going really well. Um, the audit has built, finished all of our field work. She'll be coming back to the co-op in a single audit. Um, that's about it, that's 2023. Okay, I'm going to skip the next one because I can't deal with the budget uh, going through it again. <laughs> Sorry, Lisa, go ahead. It's, it's, so, uh, at, at, like, we just finished one. We did. We yeah. did. So FY24 budget. You have the guidelines in your packet. Uh, we rolled out the budget a couple of weeks ago to the administrators. Expectations remain pretty much the same. We start with a zero-based budget and we build upon that. We're analyzing the staffing. And um, this year, the budgets are due to the um, town council and the town administrator on February 6th. So we'll be looking to have a meeting with the subcommittee probably the first week of January in order to meet that deadline. Okay. So we need a, uh, somebody to volunteer, I guess, with the subcommittee also. Okay. Any questions? Okay. Hearing none, uh, we'll move to new business. Um, the RIDE MOA <clears throat> Arts Initiative SBA Capital Fund. Yeah. So we do have are eligible to receive $51,000, assuming you folks sign your name to the bottom of the application. Thank you. Uh, so we're looking at, at this stage, uh, with the 51,000 will be invested at North Smithfield High School to upgrade the uh, music program and auditorium. So half of the funds will go into uh, replacing some instruments and getting some very big instruments. Uh, and then after the instruments are all set, then, then we sort of branch off into three different priorities that we're currently pricing. One is to upgrade the lighting uh, in the auditorium. Uh, and, and again, it, it needs an overhaul. It needs new control interfaces. Uh, the price of that is about $25,000. So that pretty much takes up the entire grant. But just to be sure, we also got some initial pricing to upgrade the sound system, uh, new speakers, uh, left, right, uh, uh, central, uh, delay speakers, you know, so just uh, to upgrade all that because I'll tell you, you know, one of the things with um, Tim McGee, yeah. <laughs> he was our sound guy yes. and he was able to patch together something incredible. Uh, we need to move beyond patching something, in, you know, together and really make something incredible. So Unfortunately, our initial pricing for that was in the $80,000 range. Uh, but again, I wanted to see all the prices because who knows, maybe we can make other things happen. Uh, and then the, the third option is something that just bothers me every time I'm in the auditorium is that the projector in that auditorium is so old <laughs> You know, to connect something to it, we're running an old ancient VGA cord 30 feet from the projector, plugging it in with adapters because nobody has VGA anymore. So what I'd like to do is upgrade that ancient pro uh, projector, something 2K or 4K. Um, also, the, the, the mechanical screen, the drop down, it is too small for that space. I would like to get something larger. Um, you know, to, uh, so, so we have a, a, a good quality projection system, we have good sound system, we have a good drop down uh, screen, we have lighting. So I'm gathering all of this together. Uh, at least 51,000, this arts grant will pick up. 
but then I'd really like to take a hard look at these other items because that auditorium uh, is a can be such an incredible community space uh, for all kinds of functions. Um, so, but, but, but it needs it needs some love. Uh, we've done a lot of work with it. We've you know sound panels and painting and seats and uh, but now we're really into that that mechanical technology piece of it to really make it shine. The air conditioner right. would be nice too. <laughs> <laughs> what a nice grant to get. So. Yes. Yeah. So assuming you sign yeah. your name to it. All right. We need all five signatures. We're good. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any further questions? <clears throat> Hearing none, we'll go to the 2023 school committee meeting dates. I assume we keep keep it as is. Okay. Keep it as is. Um, are we ready to go to executive session? We can go to executive session. Yeah, all right. So I'll take a motion to go to uh, executive session pursuant to Rhode Island General Laws 42465A. And it's listed on the agenda as item one through four. Is there a motion? So motion's been made. Is there a second? Second. Second. Roll call, please. Yes. Mayor? Yes. 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 Okay. And for those of you at home, I am going to pause this and I'm going to turn off the the speak the uh, audio and the video, and I will turn it back on when we come back from executive. All set. Okay. So we're going to reconvene an open session. I'll entertain a motion to uh, reconvene an open session. So moved. Motion to be made. Is there a second? Second. Second. Uh, roll call, please. Chair Lombardi? Yes. Mrs. Mayo? Yes. Mrs. Vada? Yes. Mr. Connell? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Um, I'll entertain a motion to seal the record. So Moved. Most of be made is a second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? The ayes have it. All right. So let's see. Um, uh, statement of notification of votes. Uh, I don't believe we voted on anything on this list. Am I correct? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. No votes in the executive session. So uh, moving on to. Um, uh, item number four, uh, relating to the North Northern Rhode Island Collaborative. Let's find this motion. Oh, here it is. Mr. Chair, can I make one point on that? Yes. Just, just want to point out, a few years ago, I did speak to the Collaborative about doing some work for them. Um, I did not. I did visit the facilities, but I was never in their employee. I never worked for them. I spoke with the Ethics Commission, and I am very comfortable voting on this matter because, again, I was never in their employee, and it was several years ago we spoke about it. Thank you. Um, I'm going to uh, entertain a motion to send the appropriate letter uh, to uh, withdraw membership in the Northern Rhode Island Collaborative. Second. Motion's been made. Is there a second? Second. Second. Superintendent, is that the correct motion? Are you yes. Okay with that? That would be fine. Thank you. Does anybody have, have any comments or questions? Hearing none, I'll, uh, motion to approve. I mean, I'm sorry, yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? The ayes have it. Moving on to um, item number five, uh, related to collective bargaining, STA, NSTA MOA. Uh, so, um, Superintendent, this is a uh, an MOA that is no cost to the school district. Correct. And uh, it's a one-time event? Yes. Anybody have any questions? Let's see. Uh,
So um, I'll entertain a motion to approve the NSTA MOA. So moved. Motion to be made. Is there a second? Second. A second. <clears throat> Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? The ayes have it. Moving on to item number six, uh, related to collective bargaining of NSA SSP contract. Uh, I'll entertain a motion. Let me get this right first. I'll entertain a motion to approve the contract and send it send it to the town council and budget committee. So moved. Motions are made. Is there a second? Second. And seconded. Um, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? The ayes have it. And um, item number seven, we were briefed on this matter uh, and there's no further action. Superintendent, is there anything else before us? No, that, that would be it. Okay. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Before motion. we adjourn, I'm sorry. Yes. Um, I think this is uh, oh. Paul's last yes. meeting. Yes, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. Exactly. And uh, Paul, I'd just like to say that, you know, you, you have made a difference. The community and students are definitely winners. Okay. And it's been a privilege in the project. And thank you for everything you have done. I, I echo that. Thank you. Thank you, Paul, for everything. I do too, Paul. Thank you for especially the lead in the last set of negotiations. Yes. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, you know, Paul, we've been together for the last six years, right? Yeah. So um, I have to say the, the words that come to my uh, my head are that you were dedicated. You were very supportive uh, and you put your time in. So I appreciate uh, everything you've done. You, you know, you, you've been an ally of mine. Uh, for six years, um, you led the negotiations the last couple of times, I believe, and so I want to thank you for that. You, you know, you're an asset um, to the school system, and, and, and I hope you will stay me. involved. Yes, <clears throat> thank you. I mean, I'll just say, <clears throat> I know we want to adjourn, but just real quick, no, this has been this has been wonderful. We've all been terrific. Um, when I started the <clears throat> in the school committee six years ago, I since I started then I. You know, my wife and I have had a child. We, I've started a business, uh, lost a lot of hair, you know, so this has been a, a really amazing journey and I'm absolutely going to stay involved. So just call me when you need me. Yeah, Thank thanks you. everybody. Thank you. All right. So uh, Jean, thank you for interrupting the motion to adjourn. I appreciate that. I, I had my notes and everything. I just so I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Motion to be made. Is there a second? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? The ayes have it. We're in.